Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have our study session. It is Petty Cashless Policy Credit Cards for Department Heads. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Madam Chair, Council Members and Mayor and residents and uh, department heads. First of all, I want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity to share with you this evening through a study session these items that are presented before you. Uh, I do want to let you know for the residents or the audience, there are extra packets, a few of them up here on that front table by the door if you're interested and did not get one or did not see it online. And for council members, I gave you a packet as well, so that way you can see the agenda, uh, the timeline that we have, so we keep things moving and stay on point. So again, thank you for this opportunity. I want to share with you, uh, going into the, a little bit of the backstory and history on this. When I became treasurer in November and took office, uh, we started looking at internal audit controls and other items and policies and such because we think that's very important to the management of the any operation of the treasurer's office and the public funds for the residents, public funds. We did notice and flag that the cash, petty cash funds were not necessarily audited or accounted for necessarily, in particular, internal audit since 2019, and that was very concerning. We do have a few departments that are very good about that. Uh, they bring it in, they have it reconciled, but there was not like any continuity to it, like not being done monthly, for example. And so that's, a, for me, when I look at that as an internal control issue, that's a flag automatically. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why this is important. I just shared with one of the main reasons because we want continuity, we want the internal control. And I brought forward to you this evening a presentation by Comerica, who's one of our financial bank institutions. And again, this was shared online and we have it in your packet. And I wanna just go through a few items and then I'm gonna have our comptroller, Jawad, share his perspective on how it's gonna help streamline and create an efficiency within our city departments, including the treasurer and comptroller's office. And that's really super important that we take a look at how we do that, as well as do it in a safe, secure manner. So if you flip to page two of your presentation, it talks about a solution, solutions for your municipality to be successful. And they give you all these ideas and things that you can do with these commercial uh, card solutions is what they call it. Comerica says commercial card solutions. You can manage fleet, you can do fleet management, by the way, which we as a council, you, excuse me, pardon me, you as a council body have talked about many, many times in many, many years, right? Fleet management. It can help streamline your purchasing and also your payables. And I added petty cashless, petty cash, really important. We need to move away from having what I call old school, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but where you have a box in your drawer, a locked box that has $200 cash in it. To me, that's not secure. If it's not being reconciled on a regular basis, right, with continuity, that's a concern. That is um, something we don't want to have in our city. We are all accountable. You are the stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. Treasurer's office is accountable for safeguarding, excuse me, safeguarding public funds. I don't look at that as being that vehicle. So that's why we're asking for the cards to be available. As you continue on down, you can see the features which we already talked about. There's controls, reporting. We can streamline our reporting processes. And I know the council body is very in tune with that. You want that. You've said that, right? You want regular reports. You want to know how the money's being spent. I believe it was Councilman Muscat said every penny, right? Every penny. This would give us that opportunity to really streamline it and save the time from doing it manually. Because right now, the reports that I send to you are done manually with a spreadsheet, an old school way of doing it. Wouldn't it be great to streamline that? You would save time and money, accuracy and security. So that's great for reporting. And of course, it's built-in customer service with this. Easy for auditing. Now I'm going to um, skip ahead just because Director Jamal is not here, our Budget and Compliance Director, and just share with you just briefly why, from an auditing perspective, this is important. 2016, the City of Dearborn Heights was flagged. We were flagged for personal use of credit cards, using personal credit cards. 
And when that happened, and I'm going to tell you it still happens, and it shouldn't, okay, it shouldn't, because when it does, you don't get your tax exemption or paying taxes when we should not be paying taxes because the municipality is tax exempt. This is a great way to make that stop, become fully compliant. And I think that's important to all of us. So this makes it easy for auditing because, again, we can grant, you know, Plant Moran can take a look at the records, right, with the online banking and streamlining the credit card process, and they can actually look at everything and audit it because it should be audited. It should be audited monthly by the city of Deborah Heights itself, which is something we just started doing. So, again, we're going to save time for staff by streamlining. We're going to increase efficiency, which is going to save you money as well. By the way, residents, it will save you money. Save your tax dollars. If I don't have to have a staff member manually or myself manually creating spreadsheets, think about how much time you're going to save. And that person can be redirected to do other work because believe me, there's plenty of it. So if we move on to page three, the program administrator, this is what I want to tell you, and this is what I heard from the last council meeting when you voted on this. And I do ask for your reconsideration. You were concerned about controls. I will tell you with a card system, you have more controls. You're not only going to be able to set a limit, a credit card limit per month, right? But you also can set a daily limit amount. You can set a number of transactions per day limit. That helps with theft, all right, or misuse or overuse. And you can set a per transaction limit. So there's lots of controls is what I'm trying to tell you. So that's a great thing. And also we can manage and monitor your card program online 24-7. 24-7. Which is amazing because we can't do that now. I can't do that now with petty cash. I have to go see, you know, I don't want to use anybody's example, but I have to go see the department head so-and-so, right? Joe. Wait, I'm sorry. Director Hashem. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't want to use anybody's name. But you see what I'm saying? I have to go in person and audit the petty cash funds. And like today, I had some department heads come see me so we can do audits. That's really important. And I think that's something that you probably want as, as council members. You'd like that oversight. So very important oversight and control. So I hope that answers that question. You can view current and recent transactions. We can see them as they happen. Okay, so we can look every day. And we can make sure that credit card is being used the way it's supposed to be used and not to take a vacation somewhere. Not that I think that would happen because I trust our department heads. But you see my point? We can check it every day. So I don't know how much is more controllable than that. But we can control manage these cards. And I think that's a really great thing that I wanted to share with you. So that's what I have. I am going to let Comptroller Jawad Go ahead and present his part of the presentation. All right, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll open it up at the end for questions and answers because I want all of your questions to be answered today. Thank you. Director. Hello, everybody. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Director Clayton. Thanks, Clayton. Uh, so I'm kind of just plugging in some of the things that you did. Director Clayton gave you a kind of an overview of everything. And again, when I, when I first came here, the whole issue that was going on was we have all these control issues and Lisa. Uh, can you speak into the mic a little? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So when we came here, there were things being run certain ways and we were trying, we were told by you guys in a lot of cases that, you know, we don't know what's going on, we can't tell. And when I saw the credit card issue mentioned to you guys, it was like, well, look what happened in the past. And I started thinking, I'm like, I mean, I, I know there was abuse in some cases and all that, but you know, wh why, why are people basically telling us that this is one of the ways that you should go and it's easier to control? So we started talking to a couple of different banks and credit card companies to see what kind of programs they had in place. So it happens we work with Comerica a lot, a lot of our accounts go through them. And they presented to us this, this system they have in place where you know they could give us individual credit cards that are tra tracked individually and they have the potential to be linked and we're supposed to be doing that at some point getting it linked right to BSNA which is our our software program that allows us to track everything that they're doing so right off the bat now we're not dealing with like a like Lisa said basically a drawer with some cash in it all right and the issue was oh well you know maybe they can take their credit card and use it for personal things and that we can see that we can freeze an account 
like Lisa said, we can raise the amount they can, uh, we can decide, you know, the city council can decide, hey, uh, you know, we want the credit, the limit to go up a little bit or down a little bit. We can do that. We have the flexibility. The costs at Comerica are a lot lower than the competitors. So that was another positive thing. Uh, one of the things that we were looked at when we, when we had our audits done was, like Lisa said, control issues, right? And they were noticing that, hey, these credit cards sometimes collect points, right? You know, and you have rewards cards, and people were using them for like their own, you know, benefiting from those rewards. I mean, these credit cards are owned by the city. So that, whatever bonuses or anything go into them will be rolled into the fund that's associated with, with these credit cards, all right? So uh, I, I personally called several comptrollers or finance directors in different cities to see what they were using. I can tell you big cities, I can tell you cities, the, the smallest city I called was, and it's not a small city, but Ecorse, I don't know if anybody, you guys are really familiar with them, but their budget's less than half of ours, and they have credit cards. And so I was kind of talking to the comptroller there, just trying to get an idea of a bunch of our policies, like internally, like in the comptroller's office and how they handle it there, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, it was like, oh, we've had credit cards for a while now, and yeah, they work perfect. And one of the concerns was like, yeah, they can go and spend them on whatever they want. I mean, we have control over what they, you know, we can take a credit card away from a director. And I mean, if we're hiring somebody to have a budget like that, I mean, I don't know if I wouldn't, I would be that worried about them using it. You know, I mean, you can't go out and buy a plane with these cards. There's limits on them. They're very low limits. And you guys are gonna have access to be able to see what they're spending on. So, I mean, somebody's gonna be accountable. They know we're watching. You know. And uh, so anyways, I mean, I had a couple other points that we were, uh, we were saying. I told you the city basically owns these cards, not the individual. Uh, let's see what it meant. Wow, I kind of summarized it in all of these uh, things. Um, can yeah. talk about the back end, how that will look moving forward with okay. the general ledger and how that's going to streamline? Yeah, well, yeah, we mentioned like, so we'll have the accounts directly connected to most likely a cash account and then that'll be reflected. We'll have an expense account that, that reflects it. So when you pull up your budget and you pull up, you know, like I give you the monthly reports or if you need some in between or to find out any specific reports, like some of you call me and ask for a specific report in between budget mailings, uh, you know, you can pull it up and we can, we can directly see what was spent on that expense account. So it just makes things a lot easier than us having to get a notice from another department saying, hey, we spent this much. And by the way, we can recommend, we, 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 can, we can make our own rules as far as, you know, one person asked me, uh, can you just use the credit card receipt as your proof that you spent it? And no, what I saw as best practices where most other cities were using where they were having people turn in their original receipts. So, you know, so you're not like, I, so we're trying to basically, I mean, as far as when I talk to most directors, I trust what they say and do, but for the most part, we have more control over them than just having to trust them. So, I mean, this kind of answers everything, and we're pretty much, I don't, I, I, everybody I talk to is using a card. Uh, you know, I can see maybe if somebody talked to another credit card program and the costs were high, or they had to do like a overall credit limit of like 20,000, I could see where people would be worried about that. But here we can do it individually. We can target it specifically to individuals. So if anybody has any questions about anything, we're here. I have oh, Councilman Abdullah. <clears throat> so come, I'm not sure who could answer this one. Um, so first of all, for, for full disclosure, I'm in, I'm in favor of all the department heads having these credit cards. I, I, I think it's definitely a good idea. And like I said in previous meetings, if we can, similar to what the controller just mentioned, if we could feel comfortable with the department head having control over a million, two million, three, four, five million dollar budget, and we got somebody that's getting paid seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, and they're gonna risk their pay and their you know, uh, ethics and morals over 1400 bucks. You know, I, I don't foresee that happening. So I'm not concerned about that. But for, just to make sure the devil doesn't play in anybody's mind, just in case, when you guys get the receipts, you'll get a, re so let's, let's use a hypothetical one. You'll get a receipt from, let's say me as a department head, so I'm not gonna use somebody else as an example, yeah. and I'm not a department head, but if I was. Okay, it would say Home Depot, for example. What? parameters would you be able to put in place to make sure that I didn't walk into Home Depot and buy a bunch of lumber, because they'll say Home Depot, 
on the credit card. It'll only, on the credit card, it will only say Home Depot. On the yeah, credit right. card, it will not You're say right. lumber. We need an itemized receipt. That's best practices. Yeah. Okay, so when I go as a, as a potential, not potential, <laughs> hypothetical department head, and I walk into Home Depot and I spend, you know, uh, $800, yeah. let's say for me, yeah. on, on lumber, for me personally, and I come back and you see on my credit card, it just says Home Depot $800. Can you please go over the system just to make sure how you would protect, yeah, so to make sure I don't use that money for myself? Best practices and then you tell them okay, the official. Go ahead. Okay, what, what I see as best practices in that is, is basically, yeah, we tell them in the policy, it says you need an itemized receipt. In some cases, where you were in Cancun and you bought something for the city, who knows, and you just got that receipt. Well, they have an affidavit basically that you fill out and you, you note in there, I'm trying to get the normal receipt and you sign off on it. So I mean, if somebody really wants to do that, like with 100% of their funds every month and then fill out this affidavit every time saying, yes, I swear that I did this. I mean, they could technically do that, but I guarantee you everybody in here would be like, okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure that you're not gonna just rely on a credit card that says the words Home Depot. Yeah. There's there's a second tier. That's all. That's the only thing I'm trying to make sure. If there's a second tier, then I'm good. I'm it's I'm definitely in favor of it. It's supposed to be okay. Policy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll elaborate on that too, uh, because you're right. I mean, if we look at the petty cashless policy that you have a copy of, and it goes hand in hand with this. So this is an internal document that really is a receive note and file for the city council. But I want you to know how important it is to the decision that you're gonna make with the credit cards. It actually outlines step by step what it looks like and what the expectation is in the guidelines. So it sets the policy. And you're right, what director, jo I'm sorry, Joanna Comptroll, I say director, don't I? Um, but there is the itemized receipts are due. And when I, what I wanted to tell you, I had a conversation with our Comerica rep. And what I found most impressive, well, there's a lot that's impressive about the program, is that the department heads can upload their receipts. And then the comptroller can see it right away. He can see the transactions online right away. It's live. Purchases are live, right? And then you can look at the receipts as well once they're uploaded. And then you can reconcile right away. So you can reconcile daily if you wanted to which is really a great thing. So I just want to encourage you to take a look at that petty cash list policy and take a look where we talk about, you know, there needs to be, the receipts are presented and they're itemized receipts. So absolutely. I think that's pretty much a standard practice like you said. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Beidoum. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you guys so much for the presentation. Uh, so my question is, um, I saw something here where it increases cash flow. Uh, so that's, I'm just using a hypothetical. Councilman Dave Abdullah is the director. He uses $1,000, he has $400 remaining. By the end of the month, are we going to pay off that $1,000 right away or are we going to pay, uh, you know, wait till the 1,400 in total is being used? Yes, so the answer to that is the way we have it structured is the right away, 30 day. Like the, let's say, let's say, I'm gonna use Director McCaffrey here as an example. He doesn't mind, right? Okay, I get permission first. <laughs> um, you know, he has his card, he does his charges for petty cash. And by the way, petty cash has a definition of what it's actually used for too. There are guidelines, right? These are not everyday, like, purchases that you know you're gonna make. It's like the emergency stuff. I have to go buy a screw for something, I don't know. What do you need a screw for? Like a shelf that's falling down. And you can have, you have to go buy it with cash. That's what petty cash is really meant to be used for. And so when he submits those receipts and they have to be done monthly, on time, on time, right? He's good at on time. Because we, meaning the controller and the treasurer signs the check, the bills have to be paid. Have to be paid on that payment schedule, just like your own personal credit card. But again, these aren't personal credit cards. These are city-owned credit cards. My next question to you is, uh, thank you so much. Okay. As a council, we have an obligation to make sure that we are you know, working for the residents of our constituents. So my question is to you guys, are we also going to be getting updated information on what each department head has spent? And if so, how are you guys gonna show that to us? Is that before every city council meeting? Or is that gonna be spammed via email? I uh, so, so that's how activity report that we send you every month. 
should have it reflected. We should have a jail monitor. <laughs> okay. You guys don't know that because you have to approve it. So you're, yeah, I was going to say, you're right. You have two ways. You have the, um, the expenditure revenue report that you get monthly, and that should show it. And then also, what I've been doing, you've been getting reports from me monthly for the Amex, the American Express card. We'll continue. I mean, I can continue that. I won't put that on the comptroller. I can continue that. And I actually reconcile. You'll see the actual expenditure. And I give you the title of what it was. And then I give you the amount. And you can see the running totals. And you'll also see the payment. So it's just like having it, the statement right in front of you. So I, I will continue to do that. All right. Just for full disclosure. That's what you'll see is kind of maintenance, but if you ever had a request, like you needed some information, you can call an email and we can send you out some. Any other questions? We have uh, Director McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Would like to say oh. Uh, 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 would you like me to go first, or? Oh, are you are you talking about the credit card? Yeah. I yeah. I was just going to make a quick statement. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, Council. Uh, I come before you today to request uh, an amenable path forward. Uh, as someone who runs a city department, I've been forced to acknowledge that the world of business today has become an increasingly digital one. It was, it was digital 15 years ago when I started. It's even more so now. Uh, many vendors don't go through the PO process. They don't issue invoices. Some local markets even make it slightly more difficult to use cash for some services, especially nowadays. Some online software and book vendors will not even deal with a customer that doesn't have a way to digitally pay. And sometimes we have to get things international. So this leaves us with no choice but to pay ourselves and request reimbursement. We do this because these services help our residents and help make, make things happen at our library. <clears throat> and for the general good of the public. We also do this because we want to use local businesses and vendors where we reasonably can. And the present system only allows reimbursement as a vehicle for doing so. With some of the changes recommended by the treasurer uh, via the auditor, uh, this is something that should be likely phased out. Staff don't have a problem with this at all, except there should be a replacement vehicle of some kind to continue to allow purchases locally and online where needed, and where the acquisitions process via the city fails. Because there's, there's some holes, there's things you can't do. A credit card with a reasonable limit and oversight done via the recommended council approved policy seems to be the most prudent vehicle to do so. The card will not be the first thing to be used when making a purchase. The existing city policies will still be first, but it will be a necessary fallback where needed. A library is more than willing to share with the council or anyone who asks what is on the card and why. Uh, in this vein, it may actually add a degree of transparency that doesn't involve digging through old files and FOIA requests and all kinds of difficult things to find piecemeal throughout the entire year. In fact, the accessibility of the data will make it easier, not harder, to find out what is being bought and why. Uh, many cities, uh, as acknowledged by our comptroller, have already taken steps in this regard uh, as it has become a necessary vehicle and tool for doing business as a municipality. I uh, hope you will consider a card for various departments that apply. Uh, and thanks for your time and attention. So Thank that's you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Councilman Muscat, please. Uh, I got a couple questions. Uh, can you refresh us on the cost of this system? Okay. And uh, I got a couple others, if you don't mind, please. Okay. Thank you, Council. Yep, sure. absolutely. Um, thank you for the question. So the answer is with, here's what we need to understand about the way our Comerica service agreement is. The more services we add, it's volume for them, and it actually lowers our prices and increases the discount. So they are reviewing that right now, but it's going to depend on how many cards we actually add. So I don't have a hard number for you. Well, but I do know it's less than American Express, which is $65, $67 annually just for the fee. Okay, so this is just, they're just going to give you an annual fee for each card. Mm. So it could be anywhere between sixty to one hundred and fifty. They won't. I don't think it'll be that. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. uh, under normal circumstances, yeah. that's. And, and the other thing is, is we also touched on the kiosks before. Mm -hmm. How much is the kiosk costing? 
Well, the kiosk is a different thing altogether. It's not the same okay, as the credit so we card. Can, we won't so that's a different that piece. Yet. I mean, I can answer no, it if no, you want, not, but it's separate. We'll, we'll just stick okay, to the subject yeah. here. But I, yeah, I'm happy to send you that information, and, and all the council ever, members. Did, it, did you ever look into doing debit cards instead where there is no fee, where you load each department head's um, uh, account with the $1,400 for a month, and he would have a debit card, which you still have to bring for a yeah. receipt and there was no cost associated to that. Okay. Well, I don't know, like Comerica, the way they, again, Comerica's who we talk to, uh, because they have this, this account program for multiple cards for businesses, right? Because this is considered a business. And I want to go back real quick when you talk about the fees being X amount. We don't want to compare our fees to the commercial market because Comerica right now gives us a 50% discount already. Okay. So that automatically comes off the top because that's that relationship we have with Comerica that we've been, like I've been meeting with them as well as Chase to negotiate fees down and increase our discount. So again, that's going to be even more because of adding an additional service. So, but the debit card, I don't believe they offer that service. So if we bring this back, and hopefully we will, not, I'm leaning toward this. Um, You'll have us have some hard numbers because you know how many directors we have and how many credit cards we have. Right, right. So you can give us some hard numbers uh, before we also vote on so, something like so that. So I can give you a soft number. Back. Would you like a soft number? Because I know it's on the agenda tonight. Okay. So, and I don't want to pressure anybody, but I do want to give you a ballpark figure. So again, I just told you that the American Express card is six, it's actually $67.50. A card. Per card. That's just your annual fee. Okay. I also just mentioned that Comerica, because of our service agreement and our relationship, they give us a discount off of those standard fees that you find um, that you know we get. So if you divide 67.50 in half, that would be the approximation we're looking at, approximate amount. But I will also tell you, to answer your question about how many cards, I have already surveyed department heads. I have nine who have responded yes that they're interested because it would be beneficial to their department. I have, and I don't know if I'm allowed to share it, but I have an email from our fire chief. Am I allowed to share your email? Sure. I just want, I really, I kept looking towards you because I don't like to do that unless I have permission. Um, but you know, the fire chief mentions the importance of petty cash to his daily operation of a fire department. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to interfere with their operation at all because that's public safety. Police station, police department, same way. Their petty cash is vital to them and they would prefer or would like a credit card, right? Is that safe to say? I don't want to put you on the spot. I'll have to speak Yeah. You want to speak on it? Oh, you will. Okay, Chief, I didn't see you there. Thanks, Chief. It's the mask. I'm sorry. But I want to tell you, I'm just going to give you a few examples that the fire chief shared. He talks about light bulbs, spark plugs for small engines, coolant, windshield wipers, oil for four-cycle engines, bottled water to be kept on the trucks at a rescue or a fire. I don't know about you, but I want them to have their water. Um, the medic license renewals, shipping items with UPS, truck towels, tarp repair, making keys. That's just a few items. That's from our fire chief. I think those are pretty important. And I know, thank you, um, Chief Myers, when you come up and speak as well, he's offered. I think it's important to hear from all of our de department heads. Um, because again, with the cost, I just shared, you got nine that already responded yes, right? By, by a soft survey. And we know that it's gonna be what, when you take 67 and a half divided by two, that gives your approximate cost annually. So, but when you talk about streamlining the back end of the books, I think about how much money you're gonna save on time alone. I think about transparency, I think about being accurate, having the reports at hand, you being able to see it. What is the price for that? $525 at $35 a That is the cost for that. Thank you, Councilman. 15 people. I don't think it's that expensive. Yeah. 
Thank you, sir. And I hope that answers your question. I'm not trying yes, to be condescending yes. or rude, or but absolutely. I just wanted you to know that I really do think it's worth it, and, and I'm not trying to be biased here, but I want you to hear from them because they are the ones that are experiencing it. They know their departments better than any of us do, I'm pretty sure. You know, in, in the past, we had, not we as a council, but in the past, other councils had trouble getting the check registers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, And that was a problem for me when uh, they, we were told that we couldn't get the check register. Well, it's still money. I don't care if it's $10 or $1,499.99. It's still taxpayer money. So. And yeah, as a former council member, I get you. Yes. I get you. Yeah. And when you ask for financial reports, guess what? You're getting it. And I would just ask that there's separate reports from the Amex and the actual. Yes. Account. I did that last time, by the way. I did. I've seen that. Thank so you. So we're always refining. <laughs> $525 to my colleagues. Councilman Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Comptroller Jawad, so what's the percentage charge on each transaction? And, and why wouldn't we use a debit card uh, with it? And, and to dovetail with that, what are the departments doing now? So if the fire department needs uh, bottled water, or how are, they, how are they purchasing or getting it now? Okay, I mean, that's a, a question you'd ask the specific department heads. I mean, I don't know what everybody's doing. I mean, I know in some cases you go buy your own water. I mean, if it's for personal use, I, I don't know the, policy in each department but and as far as the per cost I mean Lisa did the research for this uh, like as far as the financial part of it is it three percent is it a no, no it's not. yeah I mean I know that Comerica they the, the different car companies that we called didn't have a debit card policy or they didn't have a setup like debit card for like all the different departments this this was like specifically set up to like See, have for, uh, for municipalities for my business and I bank with Bank of America I have both a debit card and I have a charge card that is a MasterCard like this card the, the per transaction fee is for the MasterCard is three percent but the debit card there's debit cards and then I can also do electronic transfer and electronic payments go ahead I'm sorry if I'm a credit card company uh, you know, I mean, if I'm a bank, how am I going to make a little bit of money to make it worth it for me to make to do something like that? I'm guessing, like for an individual who has an account with them, they set up a debit card. That that's a convenience they're giving you. I don't think they profit enough mm -hmm. by having a whole municipality using debit cards. My understand. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. My understanding, it works like the MX card does. You pay it off within that cycle there's no no interest rates no fees like that it's only after when it accruals right if you let the balance grow then you're going to get interest rate so that is the same principle it's meant to really this is really again business credit card program not personal not you know my credit card or your credit card it's not even set up the same way so there's not going to be that whatever percentage rate you pay on your credit card, which is what could be what anywhere from 18% or whatever, some of these cards, right? It's not like that. Master you pay it off. Charges a per transaction fee. They, they charge a That's the merchant. Yeah. going to charge towards the merchant. Right. right. That's I when you charge through the merchant fee. That's the, the merchant gas fee. station is going to be charged. That's, yeah, that's a processing fee, and the merchant does that. Yeah. A debit card, by the way, charges you. Right. Individual debit card, you pay, credit card, but yeah, I, I missed that part where if you make the payments on time, you're not paying interest. Okay, next maybe, we have... Oh. Maybe somebody from police or fire can say what they're doing now, too. Okay. Go ahead, Chief. So I, I'm going to speak from the police department because we're one of the few departments that actually has an American Express card. Um, everything that the treasurer said and the comptroller said is absolutely correct. Those same audit details that they were saying we currently do in the police department. So there's an operational need for these for a law enforcement agency. When we have a homicide, which we've had in our city before, where the person travels across state borders, we have to be able to have officers go and be housed in hotels or fill up their gas tanks. They can only do that to stay in compliance with these things with a city credit card. It's audited, they bring back itemized receipts. Administratively, if we have an officer involved shooting here, we have to make sure for the well-being of those officers that they're provided food and substance while they're there for 16, 18, 20 hours filling out reports and doing different things. So we purchase food with that credit card because it's something we can't do 
with a purchase order right away. If we need to go and get uh, filters for um, uh, one of our evidence machines that we can get online for 30% cheaper than if we were to buy it from the vendor, we can use that card for that reason. So I'll give you an example. We use about 10,000 CDs a year to store our video from our in-car cameras. We pay pennies on the dollar getting them off of Amazon versus the company that wants to sell them to us at almost 50 cents a disc when we can get them for two cents a disc. So there's applicable and practical uses of the credit card, all of which every, year, every month comes with, the bill comes from the treasurer, we provide the itemized receipt, the account that it should come out of, and the justification. And then when you look at it, you all have questions that you can ask us. So foods always come up here. Why was food bought with credit cards? So for now, you're, you're, you use an American Express. So we are one, yes, the police department's one of those few. Any one of those, so like our training funds, 302 training funds allows for the purchase of food for a 40 hour training week for the officers. So they can stay there on site, train for the full hours. So when we purchase food with that credit card to support a local business, there's not a PO that goes out. There's not a check to be written and they weren't taking cash. So you use the petty cash, you justify it with the receipt, and you take it from the account that it's legally allowed to come out of, which is 302 training funds. There is an uh, uh, auditing mechanism in place, and this is the proper thing, and this is what we're doing. And I think every department should have this opportunity. We're trusted, the police department, a $15 million budget. We're trusted with these things. We need to trust our directors. You trust us to do it, and we can be held accountable under this when something goes wrong. So I think this is a great idea. We've been doing it at the police department, and I think it would make Chief Rogan's job and every director's job uh, considerably easier. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if he, if, he got all, if he answered all your questions or not about our petty cash. We use petty cash uh, just to use bottled water for an example. We keep bottled water on our trucks, uh, you know, in a, fire and heat like this, we keep the guys hydrated, we give them a lot of water as they're coming in out of the fires, and that's something that the department provides. So we, right now, we're paying for that with petty cash. So we'll go out, and, and it's just, it, like I, I use spark plugs, or you know, we do all the maintenance on our trucks and go change the light bulb on a truck. You know, that's, we just run up to the store and buy it and reimburse with the petty cash. Um, we also buy food for training. That is something that's been allowed for, for years. Um, a credit card would make a lot of this easier, and especially as more and more purchases are made online, uh, signing up for classes. Uh, there's some training uh, classes that have to be done online, and, and we have had people buying things with their own credit card and then being reimbursed, which we're, which we're getting away from that. So we don't want to do that anymore. So um, if we get rid of petty cash, we certainly must have something to replace it, and the credit cards are probably much better than the, than the cash system that we've, that, if that's the direction that we're going. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Sure. Next, I have Councilman Wenzel. Yeah, Chief Rogan. Yes. Um, it sounds like you'd go through that fourteen hundred dollars pretty quick. So, so we we try to not use petty cash. Like we'll try. We do have like an account with AutoZone, and so if something can provide us or create a uh, invoice or they can bill us, then that's the first route that we go to. But a lot of times, if they don't have the part or something, instead of having to wait, or we'll just run to another place and grab it. But now something like the water, they you know we do have to go out and buy that, and there are certain things that we have to go out and purchase. But I think that 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 amount would be okay. We could try it and, and find out. We we're not going through that much petty cash, but we do have people buying things on their cards. I've bought many, many things on my credit card that we've then just got reimbursed, which obviously is not the best way to be to be doing it. So, so you're good with 1400 Yeah, and, and again, we could always uh, uh, edit it as, as we go, but I think that that's a good starting point for sure. Well, I have three questions then. Uh, uh, Treasurer, um, how many departments do you know that, that actually go through $1,400 a month in petty cash? Are there any? Are there any, the only one that that might happen with is going to be police. And that's, nor, that is dependent, because they're paying for trainings and things like that, which are usually bigger ticket items. And Zoom accounts, yes. Oh, you know, and I can share a story with you real quick. Right now, um, I'm, Parks and Rec Director's not here, right? 
um, like for this, you know, her events, which are wonderful, some of these purchases are being made locally and paid um, online and things like that. And that department, you, this council approved the credit card. Um, so with that being said, until that credit card's available, she's using the Amex card that's assigned to the treasurer. So I think it's really important that we again move away from that because that's you know not really something we necessarily want to do and I'll have to reconcile that card and that statement when it, it's time. But I agree that these department heads need this for their day-to-day -day operation. We're talking about streamlining purchasing activities, faster delivery of goods, enhanced information for you in reporting, as well as controls, internal controls. And you've already heard that there are employees that are already using their personal credit cards, which we have been flagged for on our audit. And I really would like to see that be corrected right away. I know Plant Moran will be looking for that. They will be asking us, what have you done to correct that? That was flagged in 2016, and it continues. It needs to change, and this is the answer. Um, we did present part of this to Plant Moran loosely. We're going to talk more about, about it when we're getting into the audit stages now. But we're going to be talking about that because we do think this is a really good answer for that. Again, ensure compliance and visibility with the expenses for you. So does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Also, are, are you going by the calendar month or how are you doing that? That would be how we, how, whatever we set up with Comerica. So we could request that. We get to request the, the date range. We want that 30-day that period or one-month period. What happens if I, I have a card and I spend uh, my 1400 in three weeks and I go, man, I, 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 hey, I, need, I need to fix some more petty cash? That department head is probably going to need to talk to the chief of staff and mayor, right? <laughs> I mean, what if and you'd have to bring it the, yeah, the council would have oversight of that like too. If you buy something online, mm -hmm. the chief was saying, and it's thirteen hundred dollars because you can't pass up this deal at the beginning of the month. Are you cutting off or cutting them off right there? If the card is set at a limit of fourteen hundred, it's set. However, there can be adjustments made at any time, but it has to go through the requirements of the procedure to be approved. Like, I can't just approve it and get it done. It doesn't work that way. There is, if you look at your, your charter, it clearly defines the procedure for that. That is the same thing as, you know, when you do purchasing, right? It goes, it's submitted to the comptroller, the mayor's part of that process. It, if it's, uh, depending on the amount, it's going to come to council for approval, and then a warrant is issued, right? We may be able to make a payment early, but the warrant has to be issued and approved and signed by the mayor and the comptroller before the treasurer's office will ever issue a payment. Okay. So you're saying that you could search circumstances and treat it, it could. There, there is a way of doing that, but again, follow the policy and procedure that's required in the charter. Thank you. C you're welcome. Sure. I've got Councilman Abel oh, okay. next. I can put you on the list. That was just a, in, in, uh, uh, just a follow up with uh, Councilman Wenzel. Okay, Councilman Abdelhawk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Treasurer and the Controller. Thank you, Mayor. What kind of uh, card are we going to have? Is it Visa, MasterCard, or debit card? Yes, I think it's Visa, if I remember right. You remember when they really talked to us? I, know you know. I think it's in the presentation, but I believe it's Visa. Can you take a look and see? MasterCard. MasterCard? MasterCard. Thank you. It's no, either uh, Visa or MasterCard, no, but it's not it's debit. In the picture, it's the picture. MasterCard. We don't yeah. Know. Okay. Yeah. And it's not a debit card. Not a debit no. card. No. And how the that would need to be linked to an account. That's not how we have it set. But ultimately, as the comptroller mentioned, this will be integrated to where it will automatically update your ledger, which will increase efficiency as well. Okay, how are you going to report those expenses? Are we going to have a general ledger number for everybody or for each individual separate number? That's your question. It's a general question. I mean, that's something we didn't create yet, but yeah, I mean, we could, we could do it. There's several different ways. I've talked to Director Jamal, and uh, yeah, I mean, we could have a subcategory for petty cash, basically, and we could separate it into the different departments. Or we could have one major one and then just everything's itemized internally within that PL number. But it makes more sense to have them individually. I mean, why not? 
is that going to add more burden on you or it's going to be easier for you? Uh, I mean, some departments might not really use the debit card that much, or the credit card, I'm sorry. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, it, it really doesn't. It's just when you're entering the expenses in, yeah, I mean, we have to we have to kind of figure out if it's worth it to separate them that much. Um, that's not something we we've, we've decided yet. We our first step is getting it through you guys. <laughs> so okay. that's what yeah, we haven't gone um, far. For the police and fire specifically, I when I was treasurer, I seen that they travel. They go outside of the state sometimes. Sorry. Apologize. I'm not here. <laughs> Clean going on here, absolutely. Sorry. They go outside of the state, and as the chief stated, they do sometimes buy food, hotels, and sometimes they stay more than three, four days. And the $1,400, I don't think it is enough. Can they use their personal credit card or personal cash and bring receipt for it? This specific policy is for this card. If you want to go, if you want to spend anything in addition, you basically need some sort of an emergency to go through the mayor, or you come to city council and you get it approved. Now, if it's an emergency and you have to spend it and then we bring it to you after the fact, I mean, you still have to approve it before we can reimburse them. Okay, so, I, I, I want to suggest in these cases not to put, you know, our heads of department or whoever is going on the road. Uh, in a situation where they have to use their own money without yeah. authorization. I would recommend that this council give authorization to the mayor or uh, the chief of staff. The authority, if they call, that he can authorize that emergency payment and yeah. it is brought to the city council on the next city council meeting and I hope okay. my colleagues will approve this yeah. when it comes up. Now, the only issue with that is with the specific credit card, it's gonna have a limit. It's not like you call and just increase it that night, like if it's like a... Uh, you know. I, I think is, is the chief uh, here? Oh, the chief, you had, you had a credit card and I had a credit card, American Express. Our limit was $25,000. So I, I would, and I, because this is very treasurer, comptroller related, the police department has a petty cash fund that sits at the police department that gets used very infrequently. I absolutely believe that we should be part of this petty cash program. The police department also has an American Express card that has a $25,000 limit. That was the one I was speaking on and how we have the controls right now. I do not believe getting rid of that American Express card is a good function for the police department because there are times when we have to go. So I believe this program needs to be put in place, but I also do not agree if we decide to take away the American Express option because we have to be able to respond to different types of things. They're all audited, they're all documented, but yes, we leave out of the state at times simply to continue a criminal investigation and I can't have officers using their own credit cards based on these internal controls. That card sits in a, a safe inside of the police department, the Amex card, and we actually have to call the hotels to give them it because we don't give them to the officers. So there's even that oversight that it, the credit card never leaves the building. But we might be talking two topics here now Mr. with Councilman, no, but I both cards should stay in place. It's a the petty cash thing. card and the Amex card. Do you think I would agree with you that yeah. the American Express should yeah. stay. Mm -hmm. One yeah, was the treasurer yeah. or was the mayor's yeah. office yeah, and one was the police department. And they should be able to use it if any other department needs emergency to use that card with the authorization of the mayor it should be able to use it over the fourteen hundred dollars. You're and, absolutely right, Councilman. And, uh, we was, should yeah. we should keep that because mm -hmm. really uh, I remember that the limit on it was some people will be surprised. Hundred and fifty thousand at one time we used to pay uh, to Wayne County one yeah. times hundred fifty thousand dollars on American Express. Uh, we do buy sometimes, I believe, uh, prisoners' food on card. Chief, do we buy food for the prisoners with credit card? 
pr prisoner food, if that ever would have happened, that would have come out of petty cash, and that would be if we couldn't uh, provide a diet that would allow for whatever its health, religious, or any other purpose. Um, that would be the only time that we'd go into petty cash, and the credit card probably wouldn't happen at that time. The only food that would be purchased on cash would be training food, um, and then, like the when I said, the officer-involved shootings, or if we have a detail, like a casket detail, where the officers have to be there on 10-minute shifts, we have to make sure that they don't pass out and fall out. We'll bring them food versus them going out because they're on a detail that lasts seven, eight, nine hours. Um, but those would be the only time we would be purchasing any type of food with Train. the American Express card. Train. Thank sorry. you, Chief. Train. 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 The training is the 302. I'm sorry, that I call it 302. When we have training events, th the state funding 302 allows for the purchase of that, so that's where that money's drawn out of, too, when we go back and pay the credit card. Thank you. Personally, I do trust our heads of department. $1,400 is not much money, and nobody, I believe, is going to risk their jobs for 1400 or 4000 or 10000 dollars even and i don't believe we ever had any problem if i'm not mistaken was usage of credit card even when the limit was over 100000 dollars thank you okay treasurer i do have a question um by in the past we did purchase through matthew does this bypass purchasing through him in the comptroller's office because my concerns are what's we, not i'm sorry go ahead when we purchase through matthew for certain thing items we give either a bulk rate or a government discount and mm -hmm. we also we don't pay sales tax mm -hmm. right so i'm wondering if we will still let him purchase the bulk rate stuff that we normally would instead of bypassing him and paying tax on it when we potentially don't have to again like petty cash would be for those emergency last okay, minute unplanned items mm -hmm. Right, so that's kind of the definition of petty cash. Where I think what you're referring to would be like a planned ahead. I'm going to order large bulk yes. items, and yes, you would still go through the purchasing process. Sure. So okay. for that, yes, I have that sure I just it. Want this. Okay, Councilman, oh, you're on the line. Next, I have Councilman Abdella. I've already spoken about something else in regards to these credit cards, but just one more issue I want to make sure that our fellow council members keep in mind. For any department head to be using their own credit card, there's two potential issues with that. Number one is privacy. So let's use, you know, let's say I'm a department head and, and I'm buying whatever I'm buying on my credit card. If that credit card is ever audited, whether by the city or by the, you know, feds or state or whatever, it is not fair for somebody to find out what purchases that I make, which is totally private. In addition to that, I'd like to point out, if I have hypothetically, you know, a uh, $3,000, I'm, I'm allowed to spend up to $3,000 on my credit card. That's, that's the maximum that I'm allowed. If I use my own credit card for city purchases, now that's limiting how much I could use for my own personal purchases. So personally, I'm all in favor of this, and I, th I think it's a no-brainer, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Muscat? Yeah, I, I just want to say that I, I, I like this, and, I, and we're forgetting the one thing. These cards do are limited at $1,400 <laughs> a month. That's not going to change even if they come to us on an emergency basis. So they, I'm sure they have their contingencies to uh, to rectify that as they go along and bring it forward to us like normal. So we need to discard that re that that uh, idea there. So I'm in, you know, Thank you. leaning toward I that. Was, if I may, um, I'm glad that was brought up though about the amount and. Um, thank you to Chief Myers for your comments because he made a really great point. We still have the Amex cards, which the police department chief has one under lock and key in a vault and the treasurer's office. So that really is like a contingency backup that we can use because that is a separate, it's separate from the petty cash or the cashless card policy. Thank, thank you. you. Councilman Baydoon, you're thank last. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and just you know, for the record, I just want so that the residents know who are watching this at home, this isn't something that every director is going to be using every single month. Oh, I used my 1400 let me wait for next month. So this isn't something, like I know uh, Council Chair had stated, that we usually plan ahead of times before using this. These are for situa very unique situations. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yes. So we're not going to be seeing every single department head every single month spending $1,400. 
Yeah, so if you remember, just keep in mind what petty cash is for. Again, that's that last minute emergency thing that you need. And it's something that you need right now, like that bolt that Director McCaffrey needed to hold that shelf together so it didn't fall and hurt somebody at the library. That's a very last minute. Maybe he can only buy it locally and he needs it today. That's what petty cash is meant and the intent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. At this time, I will open up to public comment. You need to state your name, street, city, and you have a two-minute limit since it's a study session. Would anyone from the public like to come up and speak? This is regarding petty cash. Oh, just petty cash? Yeah. Well, it's public comment. <laughs> no, no, sir. It is public comment. You can comment. No, it's regarding petty cash. It's not. It's a study session. It's okay. like a council meeting. We don't no. limit it. Next. Go, Go ahead. ahead, sir. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ahmad Elziat, and I'm, uh, I live at 6911 Evangeline. I'm the founder and uh, chairman of the Amity Foundation. Um, I want to speak to you guys regarding uh, item number 9F. We are a local nonprofit, and I know last meeting you guys had, you guys put, voted on four uh, bidders for those properties. I know there was a big discussion, and you guys were, you guys voted to put, hopefully, the Amity, Amity Foundation back on the, uh, the bidding process. I went online to try to find out how to go about the bidding process. Never found anything about it. Just to let you guys know about the Amity Foundation, we are a grassroots nonprofit. We're not looking to purchase these homes, rehabilitate them. We're trying to do programs for our, our children in our community, in our schools. We, we're trying to get programs, trades, tradesmen, with, uh, we partnered up with the Michigan uh, Council of Trains, uh, Carpenters to rehabilitate these homes and try to uh, get our youth in the, at the high school level to try to re rehabilitate these homes and maybe get into these skilled trades. We're not looking to make money off of them in terms of uh, renting them, but to turn around, flip them, and put more money into our community, spend other programs. I would like to know how I can be put back on the bidding process and how I go to go about it. I reached out via email a couple months ago. I never heard nothing back. Um, I want to know how we can get this ball rolling. If there's a process, a lot of us are not aware of this, the process, how it goes. So if there's a process, we'd like to be aware of it and uh, let me know how I can go about it. Okay, thank you. Um, I would refer you back to the administration because they're the ones that start it, and, and, not us. We just, the end result, we vote on it. And, and, and I reached out. Not. Okay, your two minutes are up. No. Sorry. Any other public comment? Council Chair? Yes. Just one question. He said something about you're not going to flip them? No, I'm going to flip them. Okay, so I'm not looking to make the money. Uh, I'm going to do the community. So you'll fulfill the agreements of the CAP program? Yes. Without a doubt. Not, I know a lot of people's concerns were we're going to put renters in there or a lot of balance Yeah. I'll do whatever the CAP program is yeah. in the rules of the CAP program. Yeah. Yeah. But my biggest thing is to empower our kids, give them some skill trades, and maybe move on from there. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other public comment? You have a two minute limit. Good evening. My name is Hassan Saab. I live at 1180 North John Daly. I also want to make a comment about the 9F, uh, the CAP program homes. Okay, at this time, I'm going to stop you because we will be able to do that during the regular meeting. Um, this is not just a public comment. This is a comment on an actual agenda item. This so is there on is the a, agenda. It's on the agenda, right? 9F, yeah. you said? Yeah. So after we start the meeting, I will ask for um, public hearings on comment, public hearing and comment on agenda items. You'd have more okay. leverage there to speak there. Because no that people can pair it with the actual agenda item that's coming up. Okay. This time, is there any other general comments? Okay, that ends our study session.